This presentation introduces you to the exciting world of oxidation states, or oxidation numbers as they're sometimes known. By the end of the presentation, uh, given the formula of a substance, you ought to be able to work out the oxidation states of each type of atom within it. So what is an oxidation state? Well, on a practical level, it's a number with a sign in front of it. So, for instance, if you were to ask what's the oxidation state of magnesium in the compound magnesium oxide, the answer would be plus 2. If you were to ask what's the oxidation state of oxygen in water, minus 2, and sulphur in sulphur dioxide, plus 4, and so on. You're going to need to be able to work out these numbers, but for the moment it might help just to get a sense of what they actually mean, and a simple way of putting it is that it's a measure of electrons gained or lost, whether uh, genuinely gained or lost, as with ions, or just partially gained or lost, as with molecules, the kind of unequal sharing due to differences in electronegativity idea. Let's look now at how to work out these oxidation states, and to do that, there's a set of rules you're going to need to learn, and we'll work through them one by one. The first rule relates to unreacted elements, and the rule here is that the oxidation state will always be zero. So, by unreacted element, we mean when the element is not part of a compound, so things like chlorine, a Cl2, sodium, the metal on its own, Na, carbon, maybe as diamond or graphite, just carbon atoms, oxidation state is always zero for an element when it's just the element, not part of a compound. Second rule relates to simple ions, and here the rule is that the oxidation state will be equal to the charge on the ion. So taking a couple of examples, if we say what's the oxidation state of sodium in the Na plus ion, it's plus 1. And for oxygen as an oxide ion, O2 minus, it's minus 2. Do note very carefully the convention, though, for writing oxidation states. Whereas the charge on the sodium ion we can just write as plus, the oxidation state has to be the sign and then the number, so plus 1. And likewise with the oxide ion, the charge is 2 minus, but the oxidation state must be sign and then number, so minus 2. Our third rule is that when things are in a compound, the oxidation states within the compound all add up to zero, or if what we're looking at is an ion, the oxidation states will add up to the charge on the ion. A couple of examples to help make this clear. So if we're talking about the substance ammonia, NH3, then the oxidation states of the one nitrogen and the three hydrogens within it will all add up to zero. It's a compound. Uh, if we're talking, on the other hand, about a sulphate ion, SO4 2 minus, there is an overall charge because it's an ion. And so the 1S and the 4 O's, their oxidation states will all add up to minus 2, because that's the same as the charge on the ion. Well, that's all very well, but of course, if we're going to say things add up to a certain number, we've got to sort of have some starting point of figuring out what each thing is. And for us to do that, there's another little set of rules that we need to know which are some predictable oxidation states that things have when they're in a compound. Let's look at some of them. So for any group 1 element, in a compound, we can rely on it having a plus 1 oxidation state. So that's things like lithium, sodium, potassium, and so on, the group 1 elements. For group 2 elements, when they're in a compound, we can rely on them having a plus 2 oxidation state. And so that's elements like magnesium, calcium, and so on. And for group 7 elements, we can rely on them having a minus 1 oxidation state. So that's the halogens, things like fluorine, chlorine, bromine, and so on. Now there is an exception to that rule for group 7, which is that when the halogen is combined with oxygen in a negative ion, then actually the oxidation state of the halogen becomes rather variable. We can also say that for oxygen, when it's in a compound, its oxidation state is minus 2. There's an exception to that one as well, which I don't think you're likely to come across, but it's that if the oxygen is part of a peroxide, the oxidation state will actually only be minus 1. And lastly, hydrogen. We can rely on hydrogen in a compound to have a plus 1 oxidation state. Again, there's an exception, which is that if it's in a compound with a metal, as a hydride ion, like sodium hydride, the oxidation state of hydrogen there will actually be minus 1, because that's what the charge 
on the hydride ion would be. Let's use this knowledge to work out some of the individual oxidation states in a compound. As an example, the oxidation state of carbon in the compound carbon tetrachloride, CCl4. If we think back to the rules we've just looked at, we've said that for any group 7 element, such as chlorine, it always has an oxidation state of minus 1 when it's in a compound. But there wasn't a rule about carbon, and so we're uncertain about the oxidation state of carbon. We did say, however, that for compounds, the oxidation states will all add up to zero. Uh, there isn't an overall charge on CCl4, it's not an ion, so everything adds up to zero. Now, we've got four chlorines, which we've said have an oxidation state of minus one each, so that adds up to minus four. And we've said that everything adds up to zero. So our one carbon, together with the minus four for the four chlorines, must add up to zero. And the only possible way that can happen is if the carbon has a plus four oxidation state. You might want to pause a video, pause the video and just look at that a moment to make sure it makes sense to you. Here's another example to illustrate this. What is the oxidation state of phosphorus in the phosphate ion PO4 3 minus? Well, looking at what's in the ion, we see the oxygen, and our rules earlier told us that oxygen in a compound can be relied on to have a minus 2 oxidation state. But our rules didn't mention phosphorus, so we're going to need to do a calculation to work that out. And to help us do that, we can remember that when there's an ion like this, all the oxidation states will add up to the size of the charge, so minus 3 in this case. Our four oxygens at minus 2 each add up to minus 8. And so the 1 phosphorus plus the minus 8 from the oxygens have to add up to the overall charge, minus 3. There's only one way this could be, and that's if the phosphorus is plus 5 for its oxidation state. Here's some practice questions to check how you're getting on. Pause the video and see which ones you can answer confidently. OK, let's look at the answers. So for oxygen in water, that's going to be an oxidation state of minus 2. We said that oxygen in a compound always has an oxidation state of minus 2. Aluminium, well now that's just an unreacted element, and we said that's always going to have oxidation state 0. The potassium and potassium sulphide, that's going to be plus 1. We said group 1 elements in a compound always have plus 1 oxidation state. Sulphur in the sulphate, that'll be plus 6. That took a bit more working out than some of them. The rule here is that oxidation states add up to the overall charge on an ion, and also that oxygen in a compound is minus 2 each. We've got the four oxygens, at minus 2 each makes minus 8, so the one sulphur together with minus 8 has to add up to minus 2, so the sulphur has to be plus 6. F as F2, this is unreacted element again, 0 by definition. And finally the iron in the iron hydroxide well, the iron here is a plus 2 oxidation state, and the simplest way to work this out was to remember, as you should do by now, that hydroxide ions are OH-. So with two hydroxide ions in the compound, the iron must be an Fe2 plus ion, and we can use our rule here that for simple ions, the oxidation state is simply the same as the charge. One thing that might possibly have troubled you here was in question 3 where I wrote down that the potassium has an oxidation state of plus 1. And it could be that you were thinking to yourself, well, hang on, there's two of them, so surely the oxidation state is plus 2. So I'm just going to reinforce and stress at this point that you only ever report the oxidation state for just one atom uh, of a particular substance. Um, it doesn't matter how many of them there is in the compound, you might have to add it all up to work something out. But when you actually report oxidation states, you just report for one atom at a time. So for each potassium in potassium sulphide, it has a plus one oxidation state. 